So in 2024, one of my goals for my Mandarin Chinese study was to get to HSK2 level. But as it turns out, we are now in June 2024 and we are halfway through the year and I'm already at HSK2 level. So it happened much faster than I had anticipated and I had to revise my goals to aim for HSK3 level before the end of the year instead of only HSK2 level. I had so much fun studying Mandarin Chinese that I, you know, progressed much more quickly. Because of that, in May, I thought it was time for me to self-assess my level. And after going through an HSK1 mock exam and getting a 95% on it with only two wrong answers, in fact, I moved on to an HSK2 mock exam and got an 86% on it. This time with a few more wrong answers, eight in total, which tells me that I am almost there and I only need to push a little bit more to get to HSK 3 level study materials. So in June, before I move on to HSK 3 level, I wanted to test myself a bit more. And this is when I found this prep book. So here is the prep book you will see me use in this video. This is the Chugoku Kente HSK Nikyu Hoshiki Kakomon Shu. This is the new version from 2021 and essentially it contains five entire mock exams for level two of the HSK. You're gonna be my motivation to go through each mock exam contained in this book under two weeks because I plan on going through three of these during the second to last week of June and going through the last two of them during the last week of June. And I'm going to take you along with me and vlog the entire process. To make sure I get the most out of using this prep book, my plan is to also focus on correcting each of the mock exams once I go through them to see exactly where I got answers wrong and also to make sure I understand why I lacked confidence on some answers all towards the end goal of making sure I feel almost 100% comfortable with what I'm supposed to know for HSK2 level before I move on to HSK3 study materials. All throughout this video, you will also see me use the new notebook that will be my companion for my Chinese study notes for the next few months. This is the Four Seasons series Autumn Edition Notebook by Notebook Therapy in collaboration with the illustrator Milk Koyo. Now that the presentations are over, let's start today's video. Good morning guys, today is the first checkpoint of my HSK2 graduation vlog. We are the 20th of June, it is about 10 a.m. and before going through the first HSK2 mock exam of my new prep book, I have actually primed myself for about 15 minutes before sitting down and before going through it. By doing some reading immersion on Du Chinese, I knew I needed that because up until now this morning, I watched videos in French and English, so my brain was not switched to Chinese mode. So I made sure I switched it. Now it is kind of switched to Chinese. And I know it's the right time for me to start my mock exam. So I'm also going to time myself, in fact, to see how long I take for each mock exam. And yeah, without further ado, let's get started, guys. Going through mock exams, it's important for me to put myself into real exam conditions. So this is why I made sure I got everything that I needed with me before I started going through this mock exam. I was intentional with the things I brought with me, so only three pens and an eraser. I got my bottle of water, I've got my iPad to go through the audio questions on the app, and that's pretty much it. Other than that, I have of course my prep book and my notebook in front of me, and that is it. Regarding my phone, it is the device I am using to record what you are watching right now, so I could not use it and it was in plain mode. I also made sure I went to the toilets beforehand, I brushed my teeth, I was in the best disposition. However, it did not prevent me from feeling very lost at the beginning and I would say that it took me a good six questions at the start to get into the actual mood of the exam and really connect my neurons to make sense of what I was hearing. 
The first part of the exam for the HSK2 is listening comprehension and there are a total of 35 questions for the listening comprehension part which is quite a good proportion of the exam so by the end of it i also got very tired especially since the section 4 questions are the hardest to go through all in all i did not make much mistakes in fact i only made one mistake in the listening comprehension part of the exam however in terms of feeling it was quite hard for me to concentrate and to focus to be able to make sense of what i was hearing all right guys i'm so happy i just corrected myself and i've gotten an even better score than the first time i went through an hsk2 mock exam so i've gotten a 56 out of 60 that's a really good score and i was you know pretty intentional with all of my answers so i guess this is a really good score i'm really happy in total it took me a little more than 40 minutes including the correction time and here it is here is my answer sheet and here were the corrections and actually in this prep book you also have proper corrections with the transcripts of every single question so i'm also going to go through that right now while it's still fresh in my mind to check that i understood everything correctly that i didn't answer anything correctly out of luck. So I guess that concludes my first time going through the first mock exam in this new prep book of mine. So I guess I will see you guys the next time I will open this book, which will probably be tomorrow. <laughs> I will see you tomorrow, guys. Good morning, everyone. Happy midsummer. We are the 21st of June. It is 9.31. I'm at the cafe. And welcome to checkpoint two of this video. We're gonna go through the second mock exam in my prep book this morning. And before I came to the cafe this morning, well, while on the way, I actually primed myself while listening to a video from the great grace mandarin i love her videos i love her it really helped me you know get in the mood of mandarin chinese so now i'm ready to go through this mock exam and hopefully this time i won't have so much resistance with the listening section so let's go wish me luck Going through this second mock exam was actually not that difficult because I didn't take as long to concentrate this time compared to the previous day, which is surprising because today I was doing it at a cafe. So you would think that I would struggle more to concentrate, but in fact, it helped me focus even more. Nonetheless, the first section of the listening comprehension test was still very difficult for me to comprehend and I made the most of my mistakes there since I didn't understand some of the vocab words that were spoken. In any case, this was yet again a very good test of my level and I was very happy to go through it. Good morning guys, welcome to checkpoint number 3, we are Sunday the 23rd, it is 8.55 right now and I'm about to go to the cafe and go through my third mock exam with you this morning. To be honest with you guys, I'm not in the mood this morning because I've been watching some booktube videos and the only thing I want to do right now is to read my book, well my books, I'm reading two books at the moment, I'm reading Nemuri from Haruki Murakami and I'm reading this is a collection of the most important thinking by the great philosophers. I love philosophy. I have a degree in philosophy, in fact. So this is literally like my entryway into philosophy told in Japanese because I need to know the terms, right? Those are very specific terms sometimes that are used. And in fact, I've read what? 30 pages, I think? Sorry, this is not the topic of this video, but just to let you know, I've read 35 pages and I've already found words in Japanese, which I have never seen anywhere. And I've read, this is my 152nd book. 
Can you imagine? <laughs> it's crazy. Like, never seen those words before. Not on any list, nowhere. Just, this is my first time. So, I guess this was really the book for me. Anyway, you see, I'm not in the mood for HSK right now. And when I'm in this mood, the only thing I can do about it is to just stop thinking about it, get to the cafe, open my mock exam book, putting my AirPods on, starting the audio, not looking at my phone, not doing anything. I will just sit there and the first thing I will do is this automatically and I'll be glad when it's finished and I can then focus on my book. But yeah, I'm just not in the mood this morning. It happens and I gotta do it anyway because I want to complete my objectives. Thank you for tagging along and I will see you at the cafe. Well guys, I think I called it because guess what? I didn't have any trouble focusing on the first part of the listening comprehension section of the exam and this time I only got a few mistakes, only three mistakes and these were all in section three and four of the listening comprehension part of the exam and absolutely no mistake in the reading comprehension part of the exam so I got a 57 out of 60 and this was my best score yet out of all the HSK2 mock exam I had gone through thus far Hi guys, welcome to checkpoint number 4 of today's video and we are June the 24th it is 3.30 p.m. right now, it is Monday, and I'm about to go through mock exam number four out of my preparation book. So I've got my choco pie snack, I've got my water, my headphones, and my book right here, so let's jump right into it. All right, so guys, I've made seven mistakes and I got a 53 out of 60 for my score this time. As usual, I made most of my mistakes on the listening section here. Two mistakes only on the first exercise. I'm kind of happy about it. I mean, could have been worse. And then on the third exercise, I actually made two mistakes here. And then I got one mistake on the last exercise just like last time as you can see and then on the reading section i've gotten two mistakes actually and i think i got the same kind of issue i had trouble focusing like actually concentrating especially on the listening section and i don't know what happened for the reading section i need to check the answers and the explanations about the questions i think to understand all of my mistakes here because i really thought that i got it right on those two questions so let me check that now all right so i understood all of my mistakes and i actually want to share that with you guys i've got no issue sharing that of course also for me for future me who will watch this vlog back for the record i'm going to show you what kind of mistakes I made because I think that's interesting and it shows what my level is. Alright, here we go. First we're gonna check out the mistakes I made on the listening section. Right, so the first one here. So the picture was showing someone playing table tennis and in the sentence they're talking about basketball. Problem is, talent, yo, I had a doubt when I heard it and I was like, okay, maybe this is not table tennis, maybe this is basketball. I did have the doubt, nonetheless, I marked it as correct, uh, thinking that this could be table tennis. So you see, I forgot the vocab word to say, playing basketball instead of table tennis. Then the next one on the third section, 21. Yeah, exactly this one. On this one, my issue was that when I heard it spoken here, at the end of this sentence, there is the verb to drive. So in this case, to drive cars. And when I heard it spoken, I forgot that Kai meant to drive. So I couldn't understand the whole sentence then. This one is also interesting. So we go to the reading section number 48 that'll be the last one i show you guys number 48 you can see the question here someone is saying that when they were young they watched a lot of 
television and they also watch their phone a lot and the following sentence is a sentence basically summarizing the sentence before and if it's correct correctly summarizing the sentence before then you put a check if it's not then you put a cross and i put a check there because i thought that they were saying that the person talking when they were small played a lot with their phone so i was like yeah they did they did play a lot with their phone and i made the atrocious mistake of not seeing the boo here which adds the negation in the sentence so you see forgetting this kind of thing you can definitely tell what my level is right now this is like still beginner stuff i'm forgetting that you know i just overlooked the poo i just didn't see it <laughs> so that's quite uh quite a big mistake here so that's it guys i hope it gave you some idea of you know what this looks like and where my level is and guys, on that good note, I will see you tomorrow or the day after that for checkpoint number five and the last checkpoint of this video before we end it. Hello guys and welcome to checkpoint number five, the last one of this video. So today I'm going through the last mock exam. We are June the 25th. And it is the morning, I am at the cafe and I was ready to focus on my last mock exam. Going through this mock exam was again a little bit challenging in terms of focus. However, I found that I actually focused better on the listening comprehension part if I closed my eyes. So that's exactly what I did this time to confirm my theory about it and it worked guys. So. I guess that looking at the answer sheet distracts me. That's something I will apply again in the future, definitely. In terms of comprehension this time, I could understand the listening section much better uh, after doing five of these mock exams before today and correcting my mistakes. I now have a much clearer idea of the kind of sentences and the question structures I can expect in the test. And indeed, this helps me understand the questions better. In terms of accuracy this time, I did not answer all questions with a full level of confidence. Some answers were given by deduction, so that's also something that I want to improve in the future. And then when I was done with the mock exam, I corrected myself and I found that I had a score of 55 out of 60 this time. So I was very happy with the results once again. And so guys, we are done with all of the mock exams contained in this preparation book. It didn't even take me two weeks, like, I thought it would take me much longer than this to go through these five mock exams, but actually I was pretty motivated the whole time to, you know, go through the mock exams in pretty fast fashion so i guess i'm done with them already um i have lots to tell you guys because i actually wrote a lot about my thoughts concerning this whole process so i'm about to just explain to you guys everything i've understood from this very insightful process right so first of all my general sentiment about the whole process i am very proud and very happy to have completed all of the these mock exams for the HSK2 level in such a short time. I am very very happy with myself and I think it's important to you know celebrate when you are completing small goals such as this one. So that's my first thought about the whole thing. I'm very happy with myself and also very happy with my results. Then concerning the evaluation recap, so what I understood from this very intensive self-assessment period. In general, the process helped me progress, especially on my listening comprehension for Mandarin Chinese. So I guess before going through this whole process, I wasn't very, let's say, I wasn't very confident with my listening comprehension in Chinese. But now that I've been through all of these mock exams and that I've gotten a lot of practice, in fact, for listening comprehension in Chinese, I feel so much more confident. So I guess that's also why at the end of the process and for my last mock exams, my listening comprehension scores were getting much better. Even though, as you saw, I still lacked a bit of vocab, 
at some point in general I got much more confident so that's a big achievement what I found the most helpful when going through this whole process was understanding where my weaknesses are because I guess since I'm still a beginner, technically, at Mandarin Chinese, it was hard for me to evaluate, to assess where my level was and especially where my weaknesses were. Also because I'm self-studying, so I don't have any tutor at the moment to help me understand where I'm at and where my strong points and weak points are. So. That's something that I needed to assess by myself and going through these mock exams definitely helped me on that. So that's what I found the most useful. And so when it concerns my weak points and where I found that I had weak points, I have first of all a general lack of common vocab. So I think I'm almost there. I don't think I lack that much vocab to be fair for HSK1 and HSK2 level. However, I do need to bridge the gap here because I do think that there are some vocab words that I would benefit from knowing right now. I'm lacking a bit of vocab, so that's the first thing. The second weak point that I noticed is, in general, a weak comprehension of more complex sentence structures when I hear them spoken. So when I read Chinese in general, I can understand much more complex sentences than when I hear them spoken. The exact same sentences. If I only hear them spoken, my brain takes a lot more time to digest what I hear and to process it, to understand what it means. Whereas when I see the exact same sentence written, I don't really take that long to process the meaning of the sentence. So I lack a bit of practice there. I guess this is something that I will correct, you know, over time. And of course, going through the next levels for the Mandarin Chinese, but that's one of the weak points that I noticed. And then actually to go back to my reading comprehension ability, even though before going through these mock exams, I considered my reading ability to be the strongest of all of my language skills in Mandarin Chinese. Nonetheless, I still made some mistakes there when going through the mock exams and especially I made mistakes on section 3 of the reading comprehension part for the HSK2 exam. So section 3 was about saying whether an affirmation was correct based on the sentence that was stated just before that and I did not do well on that exercise pretty much every time which leads me to think that my comprehension overall is good my reading comprehension overall is good so I can tell generally what a text or a sentence means but when it comes to understanding specific points and like say whether something is true or false regarding one specific part of a sentence that's where I get confused apparently so I think it means that my general comprehension is good but my specific comprehension is still lacking a little bit so I will need to work on that so coming all this way, what is next for me then? I think that, you know, considering what my overall results were for all of these mock exams and despite some weaknesses here and there, which I just described to you guys, I do feel much more confident with saying that I'm at an HSK2 level broadly. So I think it's time for me to move on to HSK3 study materials. That was the whole intention behind this vlog that you're watching right now because I wanted to graduate myself from HSK2 level. So I guess this confirmed my idea on that. So I'm very happy to say that I will now move on to HSK3 level study materials. All right, so guys, on that note, it's time for me to end this vlog. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye bye. Matani.